All right. <clears throat> what do we want to start with? I I'm trying to find a level because you you're hotter than me. I'm always hotter than you. <laughs> but um, two guys. No, don't get me wrong. I'm a cool guy. <laughs> Wild abandoned sexuality of a stallion. Two guys. One podcast. What if I'm not a real person? Two guys. It's theater of the mind, baby. That's what it is. It's theater of the mind. One podcast. I hate chimpanzees. Anything I show you on the internet is fact now. Two guys. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Episode 33 is a magic number. Yeah. Sesame Street taught me that. It also taught me that cookie is a sometimes food. I always associate three negatively. How so? Because, you know, bad things come in threes. So if you hated the first one, you're really going to hate this one. You gotta I can't. Stay, I can't. Physically, you got to stay at one place from the mic. Son of a gun. This is You're, way harder than it. I, I'm in this, a chair that rocks. So get in the other chair. Get out of the rocking chair. I was trying a new chair, a new mic. You want me in the same place. I'm the trying same to put mic. you in a box. You don't like change, so I can't change. And I like variety, and you're not letting me have variety. Variety is not the spice of the podcast. All right, I'm moving. Excellent. It's just you got this great you've got this great vocal tone, and it's really hard for me to capture it at a high quality when you're moving. All right, I'm in a stationary chair; it doesn't move, so we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Excellent. So we've had we've had two episodes now, but what's interesting is because of the way that we've been recording, we have only had a couple of days worth of reaction from people on what they think of the show. Um, we do have some listener comments, and we're going to get to some of those. But just generally, real quick, uh, the number one thing that people wanted was they wanted a little bit of background on you and me. The anonymity is going to stay. What we can do, though, is we can flesh in the background. We're going to do that. We're going to talk some specifics about where we come from, how we uh, got to know each other. And come from a land down under. You do not come from a land down <laughs> under. You have a way cooler accent. What is your... Let me hear your Australian. An Australian accent. Yeah. yeah. I think I have one accent. No matter what you tell me to do, I mean, you can be like a uh, Brazilian. It's going to be the same guy. I'm the Rob Schneider of accent. Okay. Think man from Snowy River. Think Crocodile Dundee. Think... The Crocodile Hunter. Hey, give me your best shrimp on the Barbie or something. What, Put another me- shrimp on the Barbie. Yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. It's the worst ever. Let's see. My Australian would be... That's not a knife. This is a knife. Yeah, that's where I go. I go to... That's not a knife. This. This is a knife. That's not Australian either. That's That's, that's not like, a knife. That's better. Yeah, yeah that's, that's better. That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> no, you still sound like some poor beggar. Please, sir. I'd like some more. No, I think you know. I think you're a survivor. Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jim, Jiru. See, yeah, exactly. Fellas. That's your Australian accent. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. You're not any good at it either. It's one of the many reasons why we probably didn't make it in Hollywood. There's some background for you. We are horrible at accents. Let's get to a little viewer mail. Jamail! Jamail is here. Woo! Um, viewer Ooh, mail, do, uh... listener mail. Okay, so let's do a sequence of events real quick. First episode of the podcast, you and I recorded. We, we cut the thing up. We, I listened to it. You didn't even listen to it. We posted that public Sunday morning, but at the same time, effectively, you and I recorded episode two. Right. So at this point now, we've only gotten a couple of days reaction on episode one. But so if you don't if you don't hear your changes in episode two, that's because we hadn't got your feedback yet. That's right. Exactly. So no whining. Um. So uh, this comes from Whirly Bird. I thought it was great. I'll continue to listen. Uh, I'm not crazy about the name, I'll be honest. Also, he's uh, he's writing this back to me. He says, I know you, so I know who you are when you're speaking. I don't know the other guy. I think it's good to have uh, a name associated with the voices since people can't see you. I did enjoy listening. I'm looking forward to hearing more. Cronkite writes, one topic for future discussion could be your limited food tastes. I remember, and this is a guy that I grew up with, I remember you being very specific about what you'd eat even at McDonald's, and all of my friends that worked there can still recite your favorite order by heart, actually. I was interested in hearing what else you will slash won't eat. Okay. It's a short list. Here's, here's a great example of how we can show a little bit more about ourselves. Let's do the rundown. Here's the list of things. Oh, let's see if I can name everything. Excellent idea. Let's see how close you can get to the complete list of foods that I'll eat. That's how few things I eat. So I'm going to, I'm going to list the things, but you can't come back with. In 98, I had a piece of cheesecake. Yes, uh, we're talking about things that are regularly found in my diet. Hamburgers. 
Yes. In particular, only fast food hamburgers and very low quality fast food hamburgers. Yes. The big three. Just burger and bread. That's it. Plain. Yes. No cheese. No cheese. Nothing. Burger, burger and bread. Corn dogs. Yes. French fries. Yes. We'll toss in tater tots. Occasionally. Yeah. Honey buns. Yes. They're delicious. As I think I'm already on record on this podcast having said. Yeah. Honey buns. Okay. I've seen you cook fish sticks. I've never seen you eat one, so I think those may be for the boys. I don't know if you eat fish sticks. I know they do. Good call. Chicken nuggets. I have and will again eat one. I don't like them. Like, I'll eat one sometimes. Like, if I go and buy a six-pack, six-piece for the boys or something, right? and they don't, I'll, I'll eat one sometimes. Yeah. All right. So, that, that counts. Chicken nuggets. Diet Coke. Oh, the nectar of the gods. Now, cranberry juice. Yeah, pretty good. I, that's all I got. I think I think that's pretty close. Uh, it, you know, there's not that many more. Uh, popsicles. I didn't count that. But vanilla ice cream. Uh, just vanilla. Only vanilla. No toppings. No other flavors. I mean, uh, vanilla frozen yogurt too. I guess Swiss cake rolls. Those those little, little Debbie, Debbie Swiss, Swiss cake, cake rolls. rolls. Those are delightful. Zebra cakes. So I think snack cakes. I think we should just group that as you like snack. That's, that's really fine, the only honey, three honey kinds. Honey buns. Honey, honey buns. Zebra cakes. Yeah, zebra cakes and and the Swiss cake rolls. Okay, so that's snack it. cakes. Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh, that's true. You like them cold. Love them. And you Love like the them. mini ones, not the large ones. Yeah, you get the mini ones in the great big bag. Fruit Loops and Frosted Flakes. Those are the two cereals I like. Ah, we're sausage patties, not links. But you like to burn it. Yeah, got to be well done. Cannot be very juicy. Biscuits, plain biscuits, no butter, no jam, no jelly. And bacon. I will eat bacon. Toast also, but I really don't like the butter on the toast either. Wheat toast without butter. So that's butter. what, like 10 things? Yeah, it's about here's, 14 here's, maybe. N- none of that is healthy. Not a single thing. And you were a big dude. Yeah, I got up to, as of 2009, 2008, whatever. It was when before we had son number one. I was a big dude. I got, I've been big since I was a little kid. I was scrawny until like second, third grade, and then I got fat instantaneously. And I stayed fat all through elementary school, junior high, high school, or husky. I went from extra slim to husky. At the drop of a hat. Yeah, literally over the course of a summer. Truthfully is when I did it. It was over a summer. Like I left school skinny and I came back to school heavy. A lot of days in the basement playing D&D and drinking Mountain Dew. I, You know, I've even talked to my mom recently about it. Like when was it exactly and what happened that year? Like did I stop eating a kid's meal and go to the adult size meal? Your mom mom signed you up for an experiment (laughs) because you know she was your guardian. You were a minor, so she signed off on it. And uh, those weren't Flintstone vitamins you were taking. Those were like... Lard pills. Lard pills. It worked. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I beefed up. You know, people are like, oh, who's... What bullshit? They're not going to test lard pills. Uh, yeah, I mean, think about it. It's much easier to ship 100,000 lard pills to Ethiopia than 1,000 bags of wheat. Yeah, I don't think lard pills... Man cannot live on lard pills alone. I, I know. That's, that's why true. they make Flintstones. So, but I'd always been a big guy. I, I, I moved down south. I moved to New Orleans and I got, I let it, I got out of hand. I don't know why exactly, but I got, I got big, big. I got all the way up to like 245, 250. And then Ten I kind of. 10 pounds got, of sad in a five pound bag. Yeah, man. And I'm a short guy. I'm not very, I'm, well, I'm an average guy, but I'm not very tall. It was, I didn't carry it well. There's, let's just say it. I didn't carry it well. I was a big guy. I got I got fed up with it. I wanted to be able to move and play with my kids, and so I started losing weight. But I did all that losing weight while still having this ridiculous diet, this this completely unhealthy diet. Everybody's just gone on strike. You know what? Treat us like shit. Fuck you! When I mentioned all of those foods, those are not the foods that I like. Those are not my favorite foods. Those are all of the foods that I eat. That's, yeah, that's it. That's, everything. That's, that's, that's it. That's all you eat. Yeah. That's, that's the full menu at... Casa de one guy? At Casa de one guy. Casa de uno hombre. <laughs> Maybe that's a friend. I don't know. I don't, I don't either. I know you're speaking Spanish. <laughs> God, yes, you wouldn't understand Gaelic. So, but I've but I've been like this since I was a little kid, and the and the we can we can tell the mythology of the story sometime later. But yes, and ever since I was a child, a baby, as long as I can remember, my my diet has been super small like this. And the reason why I only eat those things is I literally am repulsed at other foods. Some foods I can barely stand to be in the room with. And I'm talking about normal things like, you know, soup or anything that's got a heavy sauce to it or a paste 
or a lot of glaze or juices. <laughs> yeah, juicy things are not good for me. Uh, I like juicy things, but I don't like the word moist. I think we can all agree moist is a bad word. Like if you were to say I don't like moist things, I'd, juicy. Be, like, I'd be like, you know what I mean too, I don't I like the moist. It's the reason why you you can find a tight pair of shorts to put on a girl's butt that says juicy. Nobody no, has a tight pair that says <laughs> moist. <laughs> they probably do, but only working girls are wearing those. I'm saying moist. Even even Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg's got a got a uh, you know a booty shaking song, but it's it's called wet. It's not called moist. Damp is also not a sexy word. <laughs> you make me damp, baby. <laughs> 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 you don't. You never he- hear damp go hand in hand with anything hot. Like it was hot and damp. So it's, it's cold and damp. You do occasionally hear it was it was hot and moist. Yeah, hot and moist. <laughs> cold and moist. You don't hear cold and moist. Yeah, moist is a warm word. And damp is a cold. Damp word. is a cold word. You're right. Never thought about that connection. Both huh. negative. It feels great and damp. It's nice and moist in here. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll move in. So, Cronkite, there's a list of the things that I eat. The reason why... And that uh, is all. Your friends, and that's it. That's the whole list. The reason why your friends remember, or our friends uh, that worked at uh, the Golden Arches, remember what I ordered is because I ordered the same thing every day. I do. He, he told you. It's plain... Double hamburger. I like two pieces of meat. I don't know why. Two pieces of meat taste better than one. Even so, like a quarter pounder would have the same amount of meat as a double hamburger. Double hamburger is better to me. If I could know when you were going to eat, and I could pay that worker to fuck your order up, I would. Every day you would every, do that. You would fuck me every day just I would, for. I would. Maybe I'd mix it up just to keep you on your toes. You'd have to, because eventually I would. I'd find a way around it. You couldn't pay every place in town. And I'd stop going. As we know, I've boycotted places because the service... Didn't you just eat at one of those places? Once after like a month of boycott, which is tremendous when you go five times a week, six times a week to the same place. Um, That's a dent in their sales. It's got to be. That's And here's the deal. If in any other industry, a customer like me would be separated and specially rewarded or treated in some fashion. If you think about, compare it to like the airlines, and I know obviously the air, and uh, a frequent flyer is spending a great deal more money in any one purchase than I why am. Hasn't, why hasn't McDonald's contacted A frequent eater? You? No, why hasn't McDonald's contacted you to be there, Jared? Well, I hadn't even thought about that. Like literally that's all you eat. That's it. And I and, and I lost, lost like eighty pounds. Eighty pounds, yeah. I mean, well, you know, eighty pounds in two years. Portion control, man. I don't eat as much, so I still eat crap. I just eat a, a lot less of it. We stuff ourselves so much every day. Every everybody does. Everyone, you eat so much more at a sitting than you want or need, and we get so used to doing that. And I but, cook a lot whenever you're over, and I don't mind. Like, yeah, sounds like a shitty thing to do, but I don't mind because I know you're not going to eat it anyway. And it never offends me. Uh, it. I will say. I think it's I'm very offer easy. And get offended when you say no, though. It's very easy to separate out the people who are going to be cool with it and the people who are not, because real quick you can see who is bothered by eating while someone else is not eating. Oh, I um, don't care. It makes me feel. You know, I love it. I love to go out to restaurants with other people because while there's stuff in their faces, I get to dominate the conversation. So, Cronkite, that's the list of foods that I eat. And and as to the the whys and exactly why it's so specific, I don't know. I I always say if I get really rich, I'll have myself psychoanalyzed. We'll talk more about exactly how crazy I am. But Cronkite went on, though, to suggest this. I really like the idea of the other guy trying some new food every week. Far more interesting might be for him to bring in something for you to try. So that's uh, Cronkite is saying that so I should I be the one trying new something. foods. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be anything weird because everything to you is weird. Let's see if one guy can eat a burrito. Yeah, I would need incentive. Like a dollar. <laughs> I will pay you a dollar for every new experience you have in your mouth. Culinarily speaking. Oh no! Wait a minute. Did you just <laughs> offer me oral sex for a dollar? I'm not going to blow you for a dollar. I'm far what more expensive than that. A million dollars, I'd blow. Everybody in this building. And there's somebody in this building that I don't even... They, I, we heard a door open and I don't know who it is. I'd blow the stranger. I'd blow you and the stranger for a million dollars. Could I get it just a dollar's worth then? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put it on my tab. <laughs> it's time to pay up, other guy. You're gonna pay me a dollar. You're gonna pay me a dollar to eat an ordinary food. Right, not just try it. Like you, if I bring you a burrito, I gotta eat the whole burrito you have to for eat a dollar. The whole burrito. If you eat halvesies, you're not getting fifty cents. Oh, now wait a minute. I right, you're gonna get a lot of turndowns. I think then for a dollar. If I, if it's if it's not trying, and that's fine. That's fine. Every time you turn something down. Everyone listening will know how huge of a pussy you are. Ah, oh, that's a true story. <laughs> yeah. All right. You heard it here first. Starting next week, would you eat it for a dollar? I'm going to get rich, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One burrito at a time. I want to talk about the kid, but where do we, can we fit him into a segment or do we just start talking about it and see what, what kid? I, my kid, you have kids. Yesterday. Yeah, multiple, but I mean, I'm son number one. Son number one. See, here's the thing is, I don't think <clears> you should <throat> ever, there's tape of you saying son number one, which, you know, when son number two gets older, he'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm number two. He's deuce. It's son number one and deuce. That's what I call him online. I, yeah, that's I, kind of favor, favoritism, man. Like, son number, son number one, like number one, ooh, he won, number one, right? He was born first. Deuce is horrible. You just caught him a little pile of shit. You, I, you are. So we got sidetracked on the way to school yesterday. Two day. No, yesterday morning. Yeah, yesterday morning we got sidetracked on the way to school. There was a train. So we went this alternate route. We had to go through. Uh, campus. Yeah, we had to go through campus. We don't normally go that way. I mean, it's not like we avoid it, but just there's traffic and who the fuck wants to deal with it. Yeah, pedestrians and stuff. And so Trying go by there. a free ride by getting hit. Yeah. And they give you that look when they pass by and they, and they walk slower. Like, hit me, motherfucker. School's expensive. They are a little entitled. And don't get me wrong, I was one of those guys, too. Like, I, I know what the sign says, and I know what the law is, and the law is on campus that pedestrians have the right of way. Those I think are, that's the law everywhere. Anytime you have the blinking lights, that's pedestrians. Yeah. Can, you just don't have those very many places. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you. they step out in front of traffic. Like, the, they, they fucking dare you, you know? Which is why every year you have a couple of kids that get hit. The point is, I've taken my sons to school yesterday morning, so we go through campus, and the boys always freak out when they see campus. There's tall buildings, there's students bustling around with backpacks, and they get, like, the general sense that it's kids, but they're big kids, you know, that kind of But they have backpacks deal. on, so they kind of associate that with school. Exactly, exactly. Like, and they're not they, going to work, Daddy. They're, yes, and they ask what it is, and I've always told them, that's big kid school, that's the last school that you go to. Like, there's a limit on schooling. It's this one, and that's it. Well, I just, you go I to college. Go to Harvard. No, son, you're here. Harvard's too good for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking keep them in again. their place, though. Yeah. Well, you know, I I just want to have realistic expectations. It's, Bachelors, good enough. Yeah. By their point, they'll probably have to have like a fucking master's degree to get a job at McDonald's. But so we're driving through campus. They want to see the clock tower and they see the buildings and just like they like it all. So although uh, have you noticed that on this clock tower, the Roman numeral four, it's it's wrong. It's V I. No. What is it? It's four ones. It's four ones. No. Yes. Really. Weren't, yeah, weren't you just on campus? Yeah, but I mean, I guess I didn't look. It's four ones, man. It's four eyes. How do you get the fucking Roman numerals wrong? If you have to draw two, you know, two thousand and four in Roman numerals, I understand not remembering whether the M is, you know, a, a thousand or a hundred or whatever. But what the fuck, man? Four? You can't get four right in Roman numerals? It's I V. Which WrestleMania this is came school, after this, the one with Andre the Giant versus Hogan? <laughs> I V. This is a school of higher learning, so I'm just not I'm just not cocky enough to think that I know more than the school. So Are you maybe, calling me cocky? No, I'm just saying like maybe four. Like there's words that have alternate pronunciations. Alternate pronunciations? Yeah, exactly. As opposed to pronunciations? Yeah. Yeah, you added a letter though. That's the difference there. You didn't pronounce the word differently. You added its pronunciations. P R O N U N C I A T I. O N S. Ha ha. Spelling bee, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, however, I did just discover yesterday, thanks to you and this pretty redhead I know, that I've been spending my entire life mispronouncing the word decipher. Yeah. Let's get into this and then we'll. Okay. I said the word decipher, but I also sometimes say decipher. It's not tomato, tomato. It's not tomato. I, I thought it was a tomato, tomato. Yeah. And here's why I think that I caught it. Like, if you were to do a math equation right now and you were to get it wrong, wouldn't bother me. In the least, because it's not your job. But you do talk on the radio quite a lot, and you do write a lot. So yeah, if you to mispronounce a word, especially the word decipher, how ironic, uh, you know, kind of irritated me a little bit. <laughs> Just like I had a math teacher in high school who couldn't say the word four. You're a math teacher, and you can't say the word four. He said fora. Fora? He fora. put an A on the end of it? One, two, three, fora. One, 
two, three, four. Like, he can mispronounce any... Like, if he couldn't say monosyllabically, that's fine that he can't say that word. That's not his department. But numbers numbers are your department. Yes, and you should be able to pronounce all of them. Grinds my gears, man. Gives me a case of the red ass. (laughs) When you said he couldn't pronounce four, I thought you meant the common southern issue with fur. I went to the store for some peaches. (laughs) Yeah. We were discussing... Well, vocal tics that I've heard both of us use since I've been editing this podcast. We both say, um, of course, and things like that, and I edit some of that out and leave, leave some of it in. It's natural. I think you do that to make me sound dumber than you. That one guy's always on it. Never has to think. I mean, he's quick with it. That other guy, pretty do slow. You really, no, I didn't. I don't. Am I editing with bias? I've never even considered that. It's possible I might be. Well, I think I think that's natural. Like, you know, if I'm a principal of a school... And my kid's going to that school. I mean, he's getting all A's. It's just, it's just all there is to it. Oh, see, I think I'd be tougher on my kids if I was in education. And they would hate you. Probably. They would be happy in the end. But they'd have the good end. jobs. That's right. They'd be happy in the end because of, of the accomplishments that they would have Mine achieved. Mine would end up being a rough neck own. in the oil field. <laughs> Probably. Working the pop line on lower tabs. <laughs> drinking whiskey out the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not a fate that I hope either one of my sons end up with. That's why they got to go to college. So anyway, we when we drive through campus, and I'm like, hey, it's big kid school. And of course, their answer is, is this where we're going to go to school? And I say, if you want to, yeah, you don't have to go to this one. You don't have to go to anyone. But yeah, if you want, I'm on, I have to promise the boys that, that we're going to go on campus when I pick them up. So I pick them up from school yesterday. Why do you guys want to go to campus so much? To get some bitches. <laughs> yes, bitches. That's right. There's lots of bitches on campus. Um I, I get there to pick up son number one. His teacher, you know, we're saying goodbye, and I'm like, you guys have a good day. And she's like, yeah, yeah. Are y'all going to tech today? He said that he, yeah, we are. We're going We're going to campus. Wait, what was it in any of our business? Why would you take these young children? No, it wasn't like that. It wasn't an, an invasive question. It was just making conversation kind of deals. Yeah, I'm paying you to teach my kids, and that's it. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> hey, but out of our private lives, all right? She says, you know, he he's mentioned tech he's been talking about college he's told me the other day oh yeah i'm gonna go to college someday but what are you that, gonna it's not that impressive because like tomorrow he's gonna want to be a bubble guppy and the day after that he's gonna want to talk in car no that kid's got since he was <laughs> since he was two and a half years old he's had a very defined plan for his life that kid wants to be a baseball player never mind the fact that there is absolutely no athletic gifts whatsoever in either side of my family he's convinced he's going to be a baseball player and i know what their paychecks are like so i say more power to you but he's, so he tells his teacher, he's like, I'm going to college. And she says, Oh yeah, what are you, what are you going to study? And he says, Um, college. <laughs> That's its own, su- but college is its own subject between your last class and, and then whenever you wake up the next morning, all those hours are filled with, with college. And there's way more of those hours than there are in the classroom. Yeah, you learn a lot, man. College is definitely what I majored in. And I, oh yeah. And I studied it for a long time. Yeah, I majored, uh, I majored college a lot. I studied college. Other guy, one of the things that I think has got the most potential uh, that we've done so far is the idea of if you could. Yeah, uh, I like those. Let our minds roam and expand, give ourselves the powers of gods, and uh, play a little what if. Today, uh, one I'm pretty proud of, little spiritual daps to uh, our buddy Cronkite. I already mentioned him once here. Uh, this is something... He wrote a blog post about this years ago, and, and it spun off into an idea in my head when I read, reread it today. If you could live sitcom style with any movie star, who would it be? I'm talking about, it's George Clooney, for example. You and George Clooney move into a nice middle-class apartment. George Clooney doesn't stop being a famous movie star. You don't stop being who you are. Your job's the same. Everything else about your life is the same. You just have to split bills and personal space with this famous person. Like George Clooney gets caught soliciting a hooker and his his punishment is house arrest with you. Pretty is essentially what's happening. Yes. Yes, I don't we haven't sketched out the background and perhaps the background would be different. It, it's one of those things where like the universe would have have to self-correct. So for George Clooney, maybe the only way to get him into your house is yes, it's house arrest with a hooker. hooker. Sorry George, you don't get sex and you have to live with this guy. You no, know, nobody said anything about cutting out sex for him. He could have I'm ladies about over. The hooker, he got busted. Like oh, well, yes, cops. yes. Okay, good point. Yes. So, it's not the character. You're not going to be living with a the character they played. You're going to be living with the movie star themselves. Could be a girl, of course. 
if you're still you and I'm still me, my, my, like my wife would live with me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. You're right. And in your case, it's going to be sorry, you sorry, and Zoe, Mrs. Other Zoe Guy. Now you're <laughs> you're officially off the list. There is still room for you, perhaps <laughs> at at Casa de Uno Hombre. <laughs> Casa de Uno Hombre. So, what are your thoughts? You got some questions on today's? If you could, if I if I could look if so if I could live with any movie star, the stipulations are they're still them. I am still me. I still have my life. They still have their life. My wife still live like we're still married. Yes. Never. Never mind the ridiculousness of why are they living in a middle of nowhere town or why does my job suddenly move to L. A. or New York? But yes, you for whatever the my two dads reasoning is to get the two of you guys living in a place together, or in your case, you well, and I'll tell you who it's not Mrs. Be. Other guy. Okay, and that's Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> I think on your part, that's the, unless you plan on fucking Chris Hemsworth, not, I think that's a good yeah. idea for you to not move in with Thor. I like being married, Chris Hemsworth. Get the fuck out. Yes. Yeah. No, I just, Chris Hemsworth, please, could you, could you just not do any sit-ups today, Chris? Please, naked at least. Yeah, so I'm cutting out, I'm cutting out all. All hot guys. That's your first criteria? Yeah, it's not going to be an attractive guy. It's not going to be an attractive girl. I think that's trouble. In paradise, um, but it could be it could be somebody who's attractive and married. So a couple? Yeah, a couple could move in. Yeah, I think that would be. I think that'd be fun. All right, what's a famous couple that you would consider moving sharing sharing like a almost like a European style where you know like families live together? You know, grandma and grandpa and yeah. mom and dad and and the kids and all uncle, live in the house yeah, yeah. together. Brad and Angie. Hmm? Ooh, I do like Brad Pitt. I meet. <laughs> Brad Pitt, we'd eat you out of house and home. Yeah, but with those lips, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> like I'm, I'm okay with that, Brad. All right, but we fuck them because of the kids. Oh, okay. So let's assume we can send all the kids to boarding school. You just get Brad and Angie. Yeah, no. Here's the I would consideration. You'd accept their application and have a meeting with them, right? Right. No, I, I think I'm gonna go with Betty White. <laughs> I think that's a very topical, popular pick. But Betty White, a couple of reasons. You just wondered because she wouldn't live that long. Well, that I'm pretty sure within the, the short few years that she has left, I could worm my way into her will. <laughs> you know she's the Highlander, though. Right, that's the other reason. Oh. Like, I might cut off Betty White's head if I get to be a Highlander. Just just to see if you could absorb her strength and live forever? With yeah, like the, after every... With th- the full power of the, of the Golden Girls? After each one of the Golden Girls died, like, she got a bump in her career. True story. And one of the Golden Girls died, and then... Bam, she's in Lake Placid and kind of has this edgy role and says things you wouldn't expect Betty White to say. It's fun watching Betty White say cocksucker. Yeah. that's. And then she kind of goes away after that like nobody. Uh, Another Golden Girl died and she gets hot in Cleveland. The Snickers commercial. Another Golden Girl died and she gets this, the Snickers commercial. That Snickers commercial killed, man. If you're Abe Pagoda, like like how bad Wait do you have to. What's his name again? Apparently I'm saying it wrong. I'm saying say it again. What's his name? I don't know. What do you think his name is? I'm not. I'm not fencing with you, homie. It's Abe Vagoda. Oh, it's a V. <laughs> you thought his name was Abe Pagoda or Bugoda? <laughs> you you know what a pagoda? Vagoda? Yeah, Abe Vagoda. But huh. you know what a pagoda is, right? Yeah, it's like a like it's the like building. A, yeah. Pagoda. It's like a. Is it a Hawaiian thing? Let's see. Abe Vagoda. V I G. O D A. Okay, well, how shitty do you have to? How shitty do you have to feel if you're if you're Abe? Va 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 good. <laughs> no, that's horrible. <laughs> um, from the Snickers commercial. Why would you feel bad about if you were Abe Vagoda? He was in the Snickers commercial. No bump. Oh, Abe Vagoda's been living on being Abe Vagoda for forty five years, though. Yeah, what happened to? He didn't get a show after this Snickers commercial. Was he on Saturday Night Live? Hell no, because he's not a Highlander. Abe Vigoda's too classy to whore himself on NBC. Really? No, he's not. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not. He showed up at some of those he's roasts. He's probably wearing a diaper shitting himself right now, and you're saying he's got too much class to, <laughs> you're terrible. to go on Saturday Night Live. A pagoda is the general term in the English language for a tiered tower with multiple eaves common in Nepal, India, China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Burma, and other parts of Asia. Way a, to waste our time. A vagoda 
is an American movie and television actor who appeared in such movies as The Godfather and Good Burger. Jesus Christ, that's the only place in the world that, that you'll ever read the, the film titles The Godfather and Good Burger in the same sentence. He's this is his this is in his Wikipedia uh, Wikipedia page. Abe Vigoda, uh, born February twenty fourth, nineteen twenty one, is an American movie and television actor who appeared in such movies as The Godfather and Good Burger. Jesus Christ, those are the two movies. That's The Godfather. Good Burger? Really? Abe Vigoda's known for Good Burger? I'd rather it say he's known for appearing in the Godfather commercial. and the Snickers commercial. Yes. That would be that would be better to the I there is say the no memory. Santa Claus. That'd be Joel. better to the honor of Abe Vigoda than than Good Burger. Oh. So you want to move in with Betty White? Yeah, Betty White. I mean, I feel like I feel like if Betty White lived with me, I could look forward to waking up every morning to the smell of cinnamon rolls. Do you think Betty White smells like cinnamon rolls? No, like but I think she bakes sticker? like a grandmother. Whenever I go to my grandmother's house, she always has me cinnamon rolls. Yeah, I don't think Betty White bakes. Like she gets up at 5 o'clock, makes the cinnamon rolls. I sleep till 10. Right. I wake up, there's cinnamon rolls for me. Yeah, but your grandmother has not made her living as a sassy comedian. I don't I don't think Betty White bakes is what I'm saying. Yeah, she would. It's Maybe Betty White bakes, but she doesn't bake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she does. She will at my house. <laughs> <laughs> she'll earn her keep, or yeah. she'll get the fuck out. No, no, no. She'll she'll earn my keep, or it's misery on that bitch. You're gonna break her Bet- kneecaps like Betty Kathy White Bates? has a broken hip. She fell. <laughs> Poor Betty. I didn't. He pushed me. You're old, Betty White. <laughs> she's senile. Betty doesn't know what she's saying. Now go bake me a cake. <laughs> Have you watched her show, Off the Rockers? No. I literally can't believe that they've put on punked, but with senior citizens. That's the way to do it. Like I'm excited to be ninety. I can't wait. I'm just, just going to steal apart. stuff <laughs> and tell people, you know, oh, I didn't, I don't know. What are you talking about? No, I I'll, yeah, I stole it. I'm 90. You're going to jail, and then I would run that shit. You're going to start wearing Depends at like 54 too, aren't you? You're I'm, like, I'm what? I'm right old. Now. <laughs> Out of pure laziness. Think how much time I save in my day. So what, what movie star do I want to move in with? I don't, I don't want to move in with an old person. Betty White, funny though she may be, like there's going to be dentures and... I want to move in with Ricky Gervais. Creams and... And then maybe he'll make a show about me. I don't want to move in with anyone that I know for a fact is smarter than I am. And I know for a fact Ricky Gervais is smarter than I am. I like being the smartest person in the room. <laughs> I'm just not going to talk anymore. Um, who the fuck? I asked this question and I don't know. I do agree with you that it would be if I'm going to continue my life and they're going to continue their life. So it's not like it's not like I'm getting <laughs> like a new girlfriend. So I can't just move in a hot chick. Uh, well, you could. I mean, I could, but I'd have to explain it, and I can't automatically expect sex just because she's moving in. I'd have to explain it to the to to my current girlfriend, and would also not have any real hope of getting sex with the family. So for me, it's, it's Zoe Deschanel, for instance. That's awesome, and now I've got the quirky, awesome roommate, but that I doesn't mean that bitch. I get to... You think so? Yeah. No, I bet she's awesome. I bet no. she's very funny. I Okay, so not a hot girl, not somebody with kids. We need a bachelor, I guess. That suits my lifestyle. Matthew McConaughey. Fuck yes! There you go. Matthew McConaughey is the guy. First of all, he's a good Southern boy. Yeah, get to party. Occasionally that dude's going to get naked and play the bongos while he's stoned out of his gourd. But, you know, I, I just need to know when I hear the bongos. Just call me bongos. Yeah, do you just, you know, oh, fuck you. <laughs> no, that's the night that maybe I stay at the girlfriend's place. You know, that's that's the way that that works. Matthew McConaughey, I think that dude would be a bitchin' roommate. You know he's always got good munchies, first off. He's got good But you don't need him anyway, so who cares? Well, but I mean, hey, all stoners like junk food. Surely I can get him. To, I can talk him into some zebra cakes or some or some Swiss cake rolls or something. Like as he's sleeping, like you're creepily over him, whispering in his ear, "Zebra cakes, zebra, zebra cakes. cakes." Thing I like about zebra cakes is they get older, they taste just as good. No, no that was bad. No. Maybe maybe if it was a Twinkie. Thing I like about Twinkies forever. is I get older, they stay the same flavor. No, no, you're fuck. fucking this up. I'm missing it. Fucking hit one for me then. See, I don't care if the guy's smarter than me. I just don't want him to be better looking than me. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I know that there are many better looking people than me. Most of my life, I have not been even in the top 
But like if there's four people in the room, I've probably been the third or fourth best looking person in the room most of my life. That's not the case anymore. I'm not a bad looking dude anymore. But all of this time I was I still had a good life and it was because I developed personality and I was funny and thought on my feet. So I I need that to not be taken away from me. I don't mind if you look better than me. I don't I don't think you can be a fat dude and say you think on your feet. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't get on your feet. Bullshit. Uh I I disagree. And this is a perfect example of why you have not been fat long enough. Fat people don't sit down, sir. You know why? Because fat people don't look good sitting down. We can feel pretty comfortable standing up in a crowd because we know how to stand and hide most of our flub and rolls. You sit down and it's all exposed. You see exactly how big the man boobs are, the moobs, if you will. You see exactly how big the fucking fat rolls are in the stomach. No. Fat guys stand up. Fat guys definitely stand up. What the fuck did we get onto this for? I don't know. I don't even remember where we're at. I don't know. We were talking about roommates. It's so dark out here. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> Got lost in the ether. <sighs> Fuck. So what? It's Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey is who right. I'm going to go with. I he's a good looking dude, which means he's probably got good looking chick friends. He's real laid back. He's down to earth. Uh, he's also a traveler. He likes you know like the outdoors and stuff. So like he'd be gone a good bit. He also has a snake pit on his ranch. So really, yeah. Fuck Matthew McConaughey. Then never mind. No snakes at my place. You know what? Betty White's not looking so bad now. I'm telling you. <laughs> I think I think it's a good one. All right. I've never admitted to a mistake. I've made a huge mistake. I've made a huge mistake. Here it is. Your favorite section and my favorite section. Why would it be my favorite section? It's you pointing out how wrong I am. Listen to the podcast sometimes. Make a list. You can have a segment of mistakes, I'd too. I'd make a list, but I'm not, I might not be able to decipher my notes. <laughs> decipher is not the way that it's pronounced, and I know that now. My favorite segment, even if it's not your favorite segment, we've made a huge mistake. I mentioned in passing uh, when we were discussing the uh, the way that I would go about getting the fastest to 2 million views on YouTube, these crazy contraptions these uh, extended machines that you see you know with a million different moving parts that get you to do some mundane object uh, rude goldberg machines no R- that is not their name that i swear to god that's the name R- uh, excuse me not rude rube r-u-b-e okay, rube goldberg machines you think uh, that's gotten him laid yeah almost definitely they're named after american cartoonist and inventor Rube Goldberg. Uh, a Rube Goldberg machine contraption, invention device, or apparatus. Apparatus is a good word. Uh, a deliberately over-engineered or overdone machine that performs a very simple task in a very complex fashion, usually including a chain reaction. The expression is named after American cartoonist and inventor Rube Goldberg. And of course, you can find I think that's links. what you should name your penis now. Rube Goldberg? Yes. It's an overcomplicated contraption to do a very simple task. It's an over-engineered and overdone so, machine. Overdone. In your head, it's always overdone. My my penis is fantastic. Over the years, the expression has expanded to mean any confusing or complicated system. I call that math. <laughs> you call math is overly complex to you? Yes. I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but... Uh, I don't math too good. I can't hardly <laughs> use no ruler. But uh, then their English skills I got in spades. See <laughs> I live in a world with calculators. I don't feel like I need to do math that often. My question, though, is this. Who the fuck, even 100 years ago, names their child Rube? Doesn't Rube, isn't that like another word for an idiot or like somebody who's easily misled or like have you already uh, looked this up and trying to bait me no but i'm saying is it no isn't i don't it, think it is like an easy mark i see i seem like that's like 1920s like yeah yeah he's a rube see he's a square huh no i've never heard the word rube before until you just said his name <laughs> to me i feel like the reason why rube invented all of these uh, ridiculous contraptions is because he's trying to compensate for his fucking terrible name that's all i'm saying so, Rube Goldberg Machines, that is the crazy contraption that we mentioned in last week's episode. And you can uh, find a link to read all about Rube Goldberg Machines and see some examples of some on our Tumblr page, twoguysonepod.tumblr.com. Uh, something else we mentioned in last week's episode, do sequels make more money than the original? You said no? Um, yeah, I think historically I don't think sequels make 
as much as the first one. You can find a link to this again uh, midweek. Links on twoguysonepod.tumblr.com. This is from 2008, science20.com. Do blockbuster movie sequels make more money? Sequels tend to make more money than original films, according to a new study in July's Journal of Business Research. That's from July 2008. Um, the recent study is from Binghamton University and Florida Atlantic University. It says while sequels do not match the box office revenues of the parent films week by week, they do better than non sequels, more so when they quickly follow the original. Okay, so, ah, wait. So you're right. The sequels don't make more than the original film, they do make more than films not part of a series. Because people are comfortable with something they already know. Yes. So a sequel is a safer bet. I don't think... <laughs> honey, honey, we can go to the movies this week and see a shitty sequel to that Jim Carrey movie we didn't like, or we can go see this movie we've never heard of. At least we know what to expect from the shitty sequel. Our research shows that consumers actually like repetition, but only up to a point. People would rather have Rocky two do pretty much the same things as in the parent Rocky movie. But by the time Rocky four or five comes along, people want to see a different story or even a different actor play Rocky. Sequels are a good way for Hollywood to make their money back, but they have diminishing returns over time unless you turn it into a series, which is going to rotate characters in and out. How would you rank the Rocky bad guys? Like, is it Apollo Creed number one? I say no. Because Apollo Creed's not really a bad guy. Apollo Creed is a misunderstood anti-hero who eventually comes around to the side of the angels. Okay, how do you rank the Rocky opponents? Ah, okay. Can retard. <laughs> First and foremost, it's got to be Ivan Drago. Really? You're taking Dolph Lundgren. He will break you. He must break you. I'm taking Clubber Lane, man. I pity the fool. Yeah, I like Mr. T as much as anybody. More than a lot of people. Respect your mama. But, no, 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 it's Ivan Drago. Ivan Drago is, is it so, Drago or Drago? Either way, I disagree. Ivan Drago. Uh, I'm not voting for somebody who's banging Brigitte Nielsen. Not going to happen. Brigitte Nielsen, then, is a different person than we found no, out Brigitte No, she's still Nielsen an Amazon. Was. She's still a beast. She was Red Sonia, for Christ's sake. Yeah, still a beast. And if that chick told me to do her, I'd, I'd get to doing. You, Brigitte, and Grace, all in a, uh, a barbaric threesome. Grace Jones. <laughs> So, uh, Drago, you're out, buddy. You're out. You're gone. Because he banged Nielsen? Yeah. So, but you got Clubber Lang at the top then? Oh, yeah. Where does, where does Hulk Hogan fall in? Dude, I don't think Hulk Hogan was in a Rocky movie. Yeah, he was in number, th he was in the third one. He, he's in the Clubber Lang one. He wrestles Rocky before Clubber Lang shows up. You mean box? No, he wrestles them. They have a wrestling match. Rocky's got gloves on, and Hulk Hogan plays oh, a yeah, professional yeah, yeah, yeah. wrestler, and they wrestle. Yeah, yeah. Thunder Lips! His name is yeah, Thunderlips. Yeah, yeah, and he's just he, he's just making money doing exhibition fights. Yeah, it's really. an exhibition thing. And it's Clubber like, calls gonna... him out at the event, right? Yeah, and it's, you it's, a fool, you a I pity you. Yeah, Whatever he and says, and mix like you don't got it in you, you can't do it. He'll murder you. He'll murder you. He'll knock your brains out. But it's not Clubber Lang that it's Ivan Drago that kills Apollo Creed. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Spoiler yeah. for a thirty-year-old franchise. 40-year-old franchise now. Sylvester Stallone wrote that movie. He wrote Rocky One, directed the thing, yeah. and acted in it. Yeah. And yet, the man is unable to speak the English language. What does that say? You can have the American dream. Like, that, the American dream exists. It is pretty awesome. Rank your bad guys. So you're taking, you're taking Drago. Drago number one. And I'm taking Clubber number one. So let's, let's get some feedback from this from the listeners. We'll let I, that settle it. It's a good idea. Who is quantifiably... Make your case for Drago right now. Make your case. First of all, he's obviously the most perfected human specimen in the films. So that's the whole point, is that he's he's a superhuman. Probably, it's not like hinted at, It they make it plain. He's juicing, right? Yeah. Like he's all yeah. juiced up. And not just juiced up, but that was back in the days when we weren't sure what the Soviets had. Maybe he's even like the product of genetic testing in some fashion, yeah. or where he's a perfect human. So yeah, he's a killing machine. The fact that Rocky's able able to overcome him is just because at that point Rocky has evolved and expanded and become more than just a boxer. He's a superhero. He is literally the manifestation of of the American population and the and the capitalist system. Ivan Drago's the best. He's the best bad guy in those films. He kills a man for Christ's sake. So Drago, who the perfect specimen of of a human. Yeah. The best the perfect specimen can do is Brigitte Nielsen. <laughs> it's not all about what you put your dick in. 
No, but that's a decision made. I think that comes down to they're just breeding. Like they just put yes. to breed. He's not allowed. He's like it's just like if you had a if you had a thoroughbred racehorse, that racehorse doesn't get to fuck every filly. Why? Because every filly doesn't get to have his baby. That's the same deal with him. I think the I think the Soviet Union had him on lockdown and Brigitte Nielsen was their version of the superwoman to pair the Superman with. I think you gotta stop holding that against him. There's plenty of things to hold against Ivan Drago. Like for instance, his big fucking comeback was I must break you. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna make my case for Clubber. His name is Clubber. <laughs> All right. All right. My dude's named after a dragon. Things you associate clubbing with, baby seals. <laughs> that is a heartless man. No soul. You think Mr. He's T- rocking the mohawk, a man before his time wearing feathered earrings. Those feather earrings were the shit. Transetter. Trend setter. Transsexual? No. Transetter. <laughs> If you're wearing feathered earrings, you got to be a badass. But he's a man who still has room in his heart for pity. <laughs> Only for fools. And my guy's played by Mr. T. Enough said. My character is played by a character. Mr. T, the one celebrity who moved past the single name to the single initial. Yeah. I right, you make a good case for it. Let's hear from the listeners. First off, who's the best Rocky villain? And Not villain. Opponent. That's good. Good Apollo call. Because Apollo Creed's up for grabs. And make your case. Why? I'm still going with. I'm still going with Ivan Drago. And I think that holds up years later. You look at what he did in the Expendables. That dude's a bad man. Let's, Thirty let's years put a later. Bet on it. Let's put a little bet on it. All right. If Clubber wins, you get to punch me in the face. No, sir. <laughs> you must eat whatever I bring next week for free. For free. For free. Yeah. If I'm you're so gonna... steadfast that Drago is the best one, and the listeners will judge, then make the bet. I'll just edit out the part where I agree to the bet. <laughs> no. Agree agree to the bet. If Clubber wins, you will eat what I bring next week. All right. There were five. There were six Rocky films. Yeah. I know for a fact the guy, the champ from the sixth one is not going to be anybody. Nobody's going to make a case for that. So that really means there are five possible Tommy, points. Tommy the gun's out, man. Yeah, Tommy gun's out, too. You're right. You're right. I like my chances there. I don't know what you're going to bring me to eat, though. I don't know if I can make that bet. I'm not going to... You're not going to bring you a pickled cow penis. Yeah, but you get that, like, there's some things, if I if I go so far as to put them in my mouth, I may vomit them. Okay. I'm prepared to live with that. <laughs> you're not the one that has to vomit. All you have to say is, hey, man, you're right. Clubber Lane is the is the better opponent, and you uh, won't have to eat it. All right. I'll take the bet. If it, There you go. Listeners, don't let me down here. Tell us who your favorite Rocky villain is. Who's the best Rocky villain? And why? Send those in. Uh, you can find us uh, on the Tumblr page, uh, two guys one pod tumblr dot com, or just email us two guys one pod at me dot com. That's the email address. Let us know what you think of the podcast in general. Give us suggestions for segments you'd like to hear in the future. If you come up with a great, if you could, send those questions, answers, suggestions, responses, general bitches, whatever. Send it all to two guys one pod at me dot com. Two guys one pod at me dot com. PP here. That's post podcast. <laughs> well, we're not done yet. Well, you can edit this wherever you want to. Sure. Uh, PP here. I can make you speak backwards if you want. (laughs) I'm going to keep talking when you start to talk. I'm going to talk whenever. P.P. Not only will I not listen to this show, I will not read your crap. I'll print it off and make you read some of it, but just because I'm tired of hearing my voice on all of the on all of those intros. People want to hear you say things too. You know, I edit you out. You don't listen to the show, so you don't know this, but it ends up being one guy and one podcast. (laughs) And And that's why it's at dot me. Yes. Yes. Next week, I'm like, fuck that other guy. One guy, one podcast. I've got plenty of tape of you going, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. And then laughing. <laughs> so I'm just going to drop you in from week to week after I say something funny. I'll just have you laugh and then be like, ha, ha. You can be like my in a can Ed McMahon. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. Put a bow on it, as they say.
quick shout out to your outro music again this week from The Mustache Is Sending It. Find them online, facebook.com slash The Mustache Is Sending It. Thanks to those ladies uh, for letting us use some of their good music. We've got other original music coming in the future. Uh, a good buddy of ours from uh, college days. Uh, you're going to hear him and uh, his new effort, Professor Shy Guy. We're going to play a little Professor Shy Guy next week. I think he's working on something original for us, too. If you've got original music and you'd like us to feature it, send me an email, two guys, one pod at me.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, two guys, one pod.tumblr.com. It's just that simple. Still not in uh, iTunes officially listed. They, it's a little hassle. They hate you. They don't hate me. I'm going to fix it. We'll have it ironed out soon. Almost definitely by the time people are hearing this, this will be information that's no longer true. We will then be in iTunes. As we're recording, from the past I speak to you, and we weren't in iTunes then, but now in the future in which you, the listener, live, Two Guys, One Podcast can be found in iTunes, probably. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. (laughs) Way to cover all the bases. (laughs) I like to cover my own ass. That's what I like to do. Wow. Wow. Long and meandering show. It's not going to be that long because I'm going to cut out all the shit. So for you, the listener, what what a fast podcast. (laughs) I'm one guy. I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. They bought a round for the sailor. And they heard his tale of a world that was so far away. And a song that we never heard A song of a little bird That fell in love with the whale